EMD has made a lot of locomotives over the years, from experimental box caps to versatile yard switchers, streamlined cab units to heavy freight haulers. So, I decided to waste two days of my time gathering every EMD locomotive that existed and crammed it into a video. I'd like to note first that I'm not counting exports, rebuilds, or narrow gauge designs, I'm sticking solely to North American designs. And boy do we have a lot to talk about here, so let's not waste any time, shall we? So here is every EMD locomotive described in 10 words, or less. Streamline box cap is mid. The Santa Fe must have been really quirky rebuilding this. Okay, I take it back, this one doesn't look that bad. The Streamline nose is a classic. This is a classic, but you could add more. Okay, what the fuck? Okay, six axle zephyr, uh... The aesthetic of these box caps is something to be desired. The green diamond was really beautiful. Streamline motor cars are highly underrated. <coughs> Pensy! <coughs> the Zephyr on Mustard. The same train, but they made it longer. Their aesthetic is weird when connected to more coaches. The peak UP Streamliners. Shame it didn't last. Skyfi Tri- Wait, didn't I already make that joke? The OG. A passenger F unit, technically? The Santa Fe E units were revived. A bigger nose for an obscure streamlined diesel. They were mid. Okay, this existed. The livery's cool, I guess. Wolfpack streamlined livery hits hard on these units. As a dog once said, rolling flat sided cube. Stainless steel streamlined units are a vibe. Always love the nose design on the early units. Surprise, these produce more than a successor. E units will always be a classic. These were underproduced, but still a classic. The turning point for EMD is for the better, by the way. They existed. Somewhat rememberable. The magnum opus of streamlined units. E unit, but compressed. So it's slightly powerful. And of course, they made a passenger variant. The steam whistles on these were killer. Nightmare to workers, aesthetically neat. So, why did EMD make this? The gauge changing aspect was the best feature. You are so smart! Bootleg 70 tonner have an ass. Gotta love that Canadian aesthetic! Man, Area 51's new switchers really hit hard. Midget. So, this is where the switchers begin. The aesthetic of the SW1s always wins. These are equally as great. So, the successor is less powerful. Jeez, why is that thing so long? Aren't these mechanically the same as the SW7? This existed. So did this? The diesel equivalent to the GG1. What was the N series again? Slowly getting out of that chin phase, huh? This is probably the only N series we know. Long, long, man. Dear God, that thing is fucking hideous! Get that thing away from me! I'm sorry about that. Anyways, let's continue. At least the design is different. Well, um. This was... quite the design. A more modern design to this series. I liked it. Different cab, but I also like. Back to the old design, but this is the peak. Now to here, also at the peak. So, what was special about these? Again, what was special about these? Now with the lows elongated, because why not? Why did EMD do this tunnel motor shit on switchers? UP likes big things, don't they? Going big can sometimes be good. Oh god, this can be taken out of context. We're beginning the road units humbly. A true staple of EMD's road units. The rear exhausts were... different to say the least. All you did was add 50 more horsepower to the GP9. Gotta love slant nose locomotives! This Jeep existed. Someone must have been quirky while designing the hood. Small and compact. Love these. Not exactly there, but they're okay. Backbone of today's rail yard since 1972. Sorry, we dipped your GP38s in maple syrup. At least they added more horsepower compared to the GP18. Kennecott really had a thing for their units. The 645 engines will always sound amazing. We forgot the maple syrup variant! Oh yes, that mandated passenger variant. These are underrated. As an Ontarian, I approve them for their loud noise. SHUT THE f What the hell was EMD on when designing these trucks? 
Now built to last through winter, or in a desert. At least these weren't the problem child compared to, you know. These jeeps have a vibe that I can't describe. Sucks that the jeeps became irrelevant. A final hurrah for the jeeps. We'll miss them. <gasps> Gotta love the design of these. For Amtrak's first units, they were rough as shit. At least the Metro variants were okay. America's most overrated locomo- I mean, most popular locomotive? Insert joke about relationships here. Gotta love them late 80s commuter locomotives. Slightly overrated, but the streamlined car body is good. They existed then they die. Yeah, EMD's equivalent to the Genesis. It's quite boxy. This is the F unit's comeback? I wanna die. A humble start for six axle locomotives. Now this is where it really begins. The CNO's variants were interesting. Aside from that, boring. Well, we raise the horsepower and keep the appearance somewhat. Wait. What even were these? They couldn't keep the design consistent on these. And of course, a mandated passenger variant. These were mid, but nothing to their predecessor. What were these again? The Milwaukee Road. Damn, these units were really mid. They really jacked them up. But the problems remained. Oh yes, did I mention mandated passenger variant? The beginning of EMD's peak? The mandated pa- Basically an SC-45 with less horsepower. America's best workhorse, and we can all agree on that. Can't wait to run these through a tunnel. The best of the Canadian cabs, no doubt. A literal red barn on wheels. The Southern Pacific really loved tunnel motors, didn't they? The Dash 2 variants are better than the OGs. They really fucked up their production so much. These aren't any better. He's short. Much better. Can't say the same for EMD's reputation. Gotta love us some Triclops cabs. This variant's underrated. Would be a shame to run these in the summer. A Triclops cab on a Mac is such a vibe. The standard cab variants are the best SD70s. UP really loved these, huh? You gotta love us some big AC locomotives. The usual deal, increase the horsepower. Now we're going to a BIG Mac! A big engine comes with big problems. These things were just garbage, plain and simple. Shame they never went through with reducing these. Wouldn't you prefer to stay behind the times? Good performance, but not enough to beat the competition. The cab design is decent, but an underwhelming locomotive nonetheless. Nope. I'm done. I'm done. I'm, just, I'm not gonna be able to. I hate that thing, it deserves to burn hell.